Avalos and fellow performance artists Lewis Hawk and Elizabeth Sisko are handing out new $10 bills to undocumented workers. Each is signed by the artists. The idea is that when the migrants spend this money, Americans will realize that even illegals buy our goods and pay our taxes. You know, art is about reframing. It's about framing and reframing things. And we're taking an issue that's being framed in a very negative way, and we're saying, there's a way to rethink this. There's a way to look at migration as an ongoing reality that doesn't have to be criminalized. Man cannot live by bread alone. Our emotions and senses need to be jogged to make life stimulating and meaningful. That's why the arts are so important. The lilt of a violin, the curve of a sculpture, the brush strokes of life captured on canvas. The arts touch the soul and keep culture alive from one generation to the next. But one person's art is another's sauerkraut, I suppose. People wiser than I say art is subjective. I guess so, because I still haven't found art in the act of handing out $10 bills, especially when they're mine. Although you've got to hand it to these so-called artists who are getting away with this big cash giveaway, or should I say rip-off. Three artists behind it, the same trio who made headlines five years ago with their bus posters declaring San Diego America's finest tourist plantation. Now another stroke of artistic genius. They're handing out money to undocumented immigrants to make us all more sensitive to the needs of migrants. Well, it's got me feeling sensitive, all right. So sensitive, I've actually found myself entertaining the thought that the National Endowment for the Arts ought to get the ax when Congress approves a new budget. And this is how my tax dollars are going to be wasted. How dare these government-subsidized artists tell us we're not sensitive to undocumented men, women, and children who live in our communities? We pay the tab, don't we, for their medical care, to protect them, to shelter them. And when disaster strikes south of the border, it's the San Diego community, the American taxpayer, who often comes to the rescue. I'm sick of these phony artists strutting their moral high road, telling me I don't care, and in this case, waving my own money in my face. I'll tell you how sensitive we taxpayers are. We're sensitive enough to pay your salary even when we don't much care for your message or appreciate what you call art. I'm Marty Emerald and that's my perspective. Y el billete que estamos reembolsando muestra esta comunidad. Cuando uno se gasta el dinero, el dinero circula en eh, la comunidad de economía de nuestro país y muestra a la gente que cada uno de nosotros toca este, a las mismas billetes. Our aim was to make apparent the role the undocumented play as fellow citizens in our economic system, symbolically and publicly acknowledging their economic close relationship to everyone in the United States and their unrecognized contributions to our tax and social security systems. Arte Reembolso, Art Rebate, was an anar our anarchic act dispensing government money as we thought fit, or perhaps justly. Of the 450, uh, the 4,500 uh, in funds rebated, $1,500 came from the National Endowment for the Arts. It was part of a larger grant uh, sponsoring the museum show. We simply gave a symbolic 10 bucks of government funds back to taxpayers. It's clearly that people don't understand when they say tax, we taxpayers, it's not very inclusive. To the critics, it was the wrong taxpayers. Primarily undocumented, critics saw the taxpayers as a nationally sacred group, imagining the citizen-only participation possible, excluding the undocumented immigrant or illegal alien as the economic brethren created a conceptual conflict. The work was intentionally not meant for a gallery or to remain sequestered in the culture section of the newspaper rather jump to the front pages. In fact, we handed out press releases to the news offices, not the culture pages. To us, in 1993, this idea of informational space as an intentional public space seemed to us a new territory for an artwork. In 1997, uh, for the San Diego uh, art event called Insight, as I, I was commissioned to produce International Waters, Aguas Internacionales, a bi-national public art installation. This image shows the same 1849 border monument around which my installation of brick, steel, and brass was constructed. You can actually see, if you look, a little rectangle around the monument was where 
the fence, the original fence stood. Um, at the time, I was more uh, optimistic about the border uh, and its permeability than I am now. This location is named Borderfield State Park on the U.S. side and Las Playas in Tijuana. It's exactly where on the map the two countries, the line between the two countries runs into the blue Pacific. In 1971, on both sides of the border, there was a celebration, uh, now very ironically, a celebration at the monument. It was a christening of Friendship Park with binationally twin trees and plaques put in at that time. Now, of course, all gone, walled over. At the inauguration, President, Nixon wife, President Nixon's wife, Pat, declared, I hope there won't be a fence there too much longer. Oops. Um, what I wanted then in our oceanfront desert landscape was an opportunity for people with a border fence to share a drink of water, see each other eye to eye, and perhaps touch each other, even kiss. With that idea for international waters, I received permission to cut a window in the border wall, uh, set up binational drinking fountains. The pipes extended from each side of the border fence uh, with the bubblers on the ends uh, from the twin drinking fountains. Is this legible? Um, I placed one of these plaques on each side of the fence to describe the source of the drinking water. Uh, it was actually a friend of mine pumped it out of the ground underneath about a mile away into the drinking fountains as potable water. Um, my idea was the installation was to look like it had been there forever as part of the monument along with the fence. Um, I cut a hole in the fence and uh, with, the, um, projects, with the project's commission, I had permission from the U U.S. Attorney General. And uh, it was a whole, you know, yay big. I was allowed to cut in the border as part of the, part of the project. However, eventually, after about a month or so, um, the Border Patrol couldn't stand it. They could not stand to be looked at and not see who was looking at them. Considering the NICEGO images I just showed a moment ago, it's clearly <laughs> ironic and a curious inversion. They also said they feared I had created a smuggling opportunity uh, with the hole, but I wondered, I, why not just toss it over the fence? <laughs> the hole wasn't that big. Consequently, shortly thereafter, uh, I prevailed with the powers of be, and the Border Patrol hole was covered up again. Then, soon afterwards, almost magically, the entire opaque wall around the hole was cut down. The fence was cut down to eliminate my window and replaced it with a transparent mesh fencing. Um, and if you note here, the artistic flourish, a sort of a Border Patrol touche. Uh, so my conceptual artwork about international uh, dialogue and intimacy had become a tangible argument with the Border Patrol. And, uh, and I responded by um, uh, putting up uh, my own marker, acknowledging the fact that they removed the fencing from that site. On 2004, I produced an artwork called, titled Feral, uh, originally exhibited uh, as an installation with two videos and eight channels surround sound. It was also distributed as a single um, channel video. The work features a checkpoint guard on the I-15 freeway north of San Diego whose apparent job is to keep contraband undocumented people from going to Los Angeles. This is the um, other video in the installation. Uh, actually, this fun his fundamental function is more theatrical and political in nature, serving both as the performing body, presenting clear evidence of governmental authority 
and offering up a symbol of a borderland tangibly under control. His vigilant gaze wants us to believe he is there to discern the illegal from the legal, the terrorist from the tourist, and them from me. The hyperreality of the gatekeeper calls the reality of the threat into question. There's also a, an exhibition of sex and power. It's obvious. I keep doing projects that bring me back to this issue because it's where I live. And so, you know, I read the newspaper and I get pissed off <laughs> or see a TV news. And so I do another project or I have, you know, an idea. So I, all of my projects usually come out of my environment. They're not from too far away, but only a few of them deal with this topic of the uh, of the the region and the border in particular. 